Hey, welcome to another video on Pranamasimha Farms. Uh, wish you a very happy new year. This video is going to be uh, about an observation that I have. And I will dwell into theory behind it. Or let me put it this way, my interpretation of theory behind it. So I am at one part of the farm. And you can see um, the banana saplings here. This is four months... Uh, or one week more than four months old uh, banana sapling. So you can see here, this is this is about six feet. The banana saplings are about six feet. You can see Gliricidia, it's also about three and a half feet. Same with uh, Pigeon Pea Togri. It's good even though I had planted it in the off season. And if I slightly pan downwards, you can see the ground is actually covered with live mulching of horse gram, Kurali. You don't see much of weeds here, be it parthenium or any other weeds, you don't see uh, much of the weeds here, right? Whereas, if I look at some other parts of the farm, I don't see the banana saplings being uh, this big. They're not bad, they're about 3 feet uh, to 4 feet. I don't know the exact measurement, obviously, but it's about 3 to 4 feet. And the observ other observation I made was, when I kind of panned uh, down, uh, there are a good number of weeds around it. Now, uh, when I was thinking, discussing with uh, my farm help, uh, one of the conclusions we had was, this part of the farm uh, is tilted, or when it, when, you, when it used to rain heavily, before I bought the farm, there was no trenches, there were no trenches, uh, water used to gush here, water used to be uh, standing here, right? So, the theory is, or uh, the hypothesis is, all the topsoil got washed away and it's kind of saturated here. That's why the fertility of this part of my farm is quite good compared to the other parts of the farm. Now, it got me thinking, it kind of went me through an internet search on what fertility actually means when it comes to the uh, soil fertility, right? And in natural farming, what we focus on is soil biology, not soil chemistry. Uh, we focus on microorganisms in the soil. So, when we talk of a fertile soil, what kind of microorganisms exist? And when we talk of not so fertile soil, what kind of microorganisms exist? So, ideally, a fertile soil should have uh, bacteria, fungi, protozoa and nematodes. And it should be in, in good ratio. Um, and a fungi-rich soil is actually quite fertile. Because uh, fungi kind of forms this web, uh, a micro web in the soil. And it helps uh, plants take on nutrients that are far away from the root zone of the plants. They kind of have a symbiotic relationship. right? So uh, a fungi-rich soil is always a fertile soil. And when we talk of a fungi-rich soil, Fungi converts nitrogen into ammonia, which is the form of nitrogen that these uh, horticulture plants require, right? So fungi converts nitrogen to ammonia, which these uh, horticulture plants require, whereas the weeds, or let me put it this way, seasonal weeds uh, or even uh, perennial weeds, they require nitrogen in the form of nitrates. and the conversion of nitrogen to nitrate is made by bacteria. So, so what that means is, if if a bacteria, if a uh, if a soil is if the soil is uh, dominated by bacteria microorganism, uh, the nitrogen is converted to nitrates, and that means weeds grow. And you have less of ammonia, which horticulture plants require. That's why you might not see that good growth of horticulture plants. Whereas a fertile soil has a good fungi population, that means nitrogen is converted to ammonia, which is liked by the horticulture plants, it grows well. And because uh, nitrogen is converted to ammonia and less of nitrates, your weeds doesn't grow as, as, as much as other parts of less fertile soil. So that's the theory behind uh, soil fertility that I kind of wanted to share. Again, this is my own learning, I might be totally wrong here. Uh, this is just me trying to learn, make trying to make sense of it. Thank you for watching the video. Have a good day. Bye.